I considered a husband killer offer. So Judah didn't like this, and remember, Onan is the guy who spills his seed on the ground, if you recall. Again, these are pretty, pretty mature stories. And because he, um, I forget, we'll get to that story, but he's one of the sons that moved to, moved to have relations with her, and so she gets angry, and so she makes believe she's a prostitute. And uh, she's not his daughter, but she's his daughter-in-law. And she has a, she, she tricks him into having a child with her. And, uh, so someone's telling stories about the Judeans here. Someone who doesn't, who wants to get back with them. The tribe of Judah, yeah, look, your ancestor Judah, look how he behaved. And there's nasty stories about Reuben, too. At one point, Reuben loses the heritage because he was supposed, he, he actually slept with his father's concubine. And uh, so he gets, uh, he gets his. But we'll get to those stories. There's a lot of juicy stories in the book of Genesis. And uh, a lot of them are sexual. And uh, you know, it's, I think it's frank in a way. You know. Anyway, I think this is again another story about neighbors. What's the capital of Jordan today? Who knows? Amon? Amon? Why? Ammonites. Ammonites. Still, the name's still there. The capital of the Ammonites are, are there in Transjordan. They're in the northern part of Transjordan. The Moabites are in the southern part of Transjordan. These are neighboring people. Okay, the Gerar story, chapter 20, we already had. Thank God we've gotten past that one. 21, we're getting more. Uh, so Abraham did deal kindly with Sarah. And a son was born to him in his old age, as God had promised. Eloist story. And he circumcised the son just like the Eloist had demanded. And Abraham was 100 years old. Yeah, this is very priestly here again. When Isaac was born, then Sarah said, third time, God has given me cause to laugh. Now, I think uh, the other time when she laughed, it was Yahweh. Now, this is Eloist. Now, the previous one, there was some pleasure. Is pleasure going to come my way again? And also laughing that she was too old because she didn't have any periods anymore. Now this one is, she laughs. Uh, because God has given me cause to be joyful. She's laughing now because she's happy. This is Eloist. It's always a bit more corny. I, I'm not sure that it's as effective. Uh, so that's the third laugh. First, Abraham laughed. Then, Sarah laughed because she couldn't believe it. Now she's laughing because she's happy. Three last stories about the brother of Isaac. Well, I hope someone else can do this as well for you. Um, uh, it's the best I can do on these texts. and uh, I, I wish someone had done this for me when I was here. It would have uh, been helpful. So, um, there's a little sort of song given here. And all those who here will laugh with me. Who would have told Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have born him a child in his old age? Anyway, our mind has it that this is a like a little poem, so we did. Now, this is an Eloist story about Isaac and Ishmael being driven away again. And we already had that earlier. And the reason there was because Hagar was uppity. Here I think it's because, since Abraham didn't have a child yet, it's because Sarah doesn't want, it's not because Hagar is uppity, it's because Sarah doesn't want her child playing with Hagar's offspring. You see the parallel of the two stories? This has been spliced in later. And oh, that's nice, but this is an Eloist story, isn't it, again? Huh? In verse 11 it says God. Yeah, that's Eloist again. God. No, this is Eloist again. The other one would be always, I think, great. You can check it and see if I think you'll find that again. The, 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 the Eloist Eloist works pretty well, actually. For the, it's a pretty good uh, theory. 
and it's borne out a lot in the, in the text. It may not be perfect, but it, uh, it helps. Uh, to, uh, it, it's it's uh, pretty helpful in many ways. Drive away the slave girl. Paul uses that in Galatians, by the way, to say that, uh, as I told you, we are the, uh, the children of the free woman, and uh, the Jews are the children of the slave woman. He totally reverses this whole story. We new Christians are the children of the free woman. And the reason is because we're free of the, of the law. But uh, Hagar, Hagar is uh, Mount Sinai in Arabia, he says in Galatians 4. And the Jews are enslaved to uh, basically the Mosaic, the Torah. And they're slaves to the law. And he, that he quotes this, drive out the slave woman. And I don't honestly think that's a fair thing to apply to. I don't think that's a fair thing to apply to who is observing the law and who isn't. That's nothing of what this story is. That's just someone who takes what he can out of the story and uses it for his own purposes. And that's why I don't like Paul as a person. So I think he's very, um, he's very um, shifty. And he'll do whatever he has to do to try to win the argument to people who don't know anything about these stories, who don't read it for themselves. And he just picks and chooses however he wants and uses things however he wants to use them. Have nothing whatever to do with the story themselves. Yeah? Right, right over that. I just look at it. But he does mention Paul. I mean, I, I'm not, well, I'm not going to get into that. I, it's too, if you want to discuss that, we'll discuss it later. But I'm just trying yeah. to say that he does use this yeah. to uh, to talk about the people, uh, that, the, that the Jews are the sons of the slave. That's what he's saying. Yeah, just like he said, allegory. That's all he said. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Said, such things are, are allegory. <laughs> that's pushing, that's just pushing the allegory out of the, you know, beyond anything. He's just taking the word drive out the slave woman because it's, it's helping him. This story is nothing, there's nothing allegorical in this story that has to do with observing the law and not observing the law. That's what I'm trying to say. No, he does say such and so. But then, where does he get that from, allegory? That's Philo of Alexandria's method. Philo of Alexandria believed in allegorical interpretation of the Old Testament. He didn't take the Old Testament story literally. He wanted to do just what you're saying there. But Paul pushes that like way beyond Philo. Way beyond five. Again, look, it's a matter of taste. I'm being honest with you. Paul's not someone who appeals to me as a person because I don't like people who are not, who are not, um, who are not, who do things that are a little bit underhand. And uh, he's not my favorite kind of person. And uh, I have to be honest. And I told him I'm doing showing you where he gets this from. Here's where he, the whole thing in Galatians 4 is 